In the previous tutorial video, we developed a complete test case for the product class in the model package. And uh, let's recap, uh, recap very quickly. So we were only testing an object created by the uh, default constructor from the product class. And also we try to test the uh, return values for the various accessor methods for, of string type, integer type, Boolean type, and also double type. And also we got this complicated to string method to, uh, for testing. So far, we haven't really invoked any mutator method to, uh, to set the values for the attributes, which we will do in the current video. Let me emphasize one more point before we, before we develop two more test cases for the product class. Remember I spoke about in the uh, previous video, when you compare the way we try to verify the correctness of, uh, of software, right? So let me go back to the console application product app. Every time if I put some lines of code, and if I want to see what the effects are, I will need to have a system that are the print line, and then I will launch the uh, console application and need to manually inspect the console outputs by my eyes, which are which is pretty error prone because we are after all, we are just humans. On the other hand, if you can encode all the expected values and actual value like uh, this one here, for example, we if, if we try to assert uh, equals method here. We say that whenever we try to call p.getPrice, when p is only a new object created by the default constructor, its return value should always be 0, 0.0 for its price. That's something we have encoded as an assertion there. So we don't really have to use any manual inspection any further. We don't need to. Every time we want to re uh, reassure the correctness of our software, we can simply just relaunch the JUnit test button over here, and then it's going to give us a green bar. So it's a much more convenient way, and that will actually scale over larger applications that we've developed for the, our Java program. All right, so let's now develop more uh, two more test cases. What I would like to do is for the first test case, uh, for test case number two, let me just close the console app. For test case number two, I would like to test creating an object using the overloaded version of the constructor, where we will try to initialize just the model and original price, whereas all the other four attributes will still have their default values. That's test case number two. Test case number three, we will use this uh, default. Uh, we will use this overloaded constructor to create the objects, but we also try to use mutator methods such as set model to set the. Uh, oh, sorry, not set model, such as set finish to actually set the uh, uh, attribute value, so we can also test it. Right. So these are the two test cases I would like to do in this video, and then we'll do a little bit of tracing as well. Okay, let's go back to test products. Let me just start you with quickly, and then we can do some copy and paste to save some typing. I will do that in just a moment. Remember to start a JUnit test. Let me just move that all the way to the middle over here. To start a new test case, we have to say at test, capital T. And then we're going to say public void, right? This is always a routine. And we can just follow the same naming convention. Let's say test product one. We'll copy that, and we just need the first line over here. Let's now paste it over here. Rather than product one, it's going to be product two, test case number two. If you're developing your own test cases, the naming convention for your method is kind of up to you, but they should be consistent. Okay, so once we got the P over here, right? So now, rather than calling this default version, I would like to call the overloaded version. Again, the overloaded version is going to expect Two, uh, two data over here. One is the string model, the other one is the double original price. Let me go back there. And I will simply just pass uh, the two information here. I would say iPad Pro 12.9. That's one mo possible example model. And for the price, I will just put an arbitrary value here just for testing purpose. I would say 1709.00, a double value. Okay, so you can see the first line here is very different, right? We are using either uh, default constructor versus the overloaded version of the constructor. And what about the rest of the test cases? We might just add uh, some few assertions, but I think for the majority of them, they will just be similar. But we got to change the corresponding expected value uh, if needed. So I would say starting from here, copy all the way to here. So we'll go back to test product one and copying from line 15, if you got a matching number, and all the way to the end. Don't copy this uh, closing brackets, okay? Copy that, 
and then we're going to paste it over here. So we're gonna paste. Hey, okay, okay, you can see how somehow the indentation is kind of out of out of place. What you can do is you can do Control A or Command A to select everything, and then you can say uh, Control I or Command I. That will fix the indentation. So Command I in the case uh simply means to fix the indentation. I stands for indentation. That's also a very useful feature for you to use, right? You can see everything compiles. However, do you expect all the assertions? under test product two to pass. I would I would say maybe not. For example, if I simply say run, right? You can see we got a red bar. That means at least one test case actually fell. Specifically, you can see test product one actually got a green check, but test product two actually does not pass. Which one specifically? Uh, they will always show the first assertion that actually fell. If I double click on that, you can see the first one actually here fell. So that means assert now p.get model does not pass, meaning that p.get model is not now anymore since we are using this overloaded version of the constructor, right? So that, that means there's some, this certain, there are maybe a, a few places that we have to fix. So let's now try to work on that, okay? Apparently, assert now is not applicable anymore. There is some very useful assertion. You might have guessed that already. What about assert not now? So this is just another assertion that's very useful, okay? So this one is gonna uh, pass, but just to save your time. Let me give you some alternatives over here. We can also use assert equals, assert equals over here. And then uh, let me say, so I can simply copy this string over here, right? Expected value, and then p.getModel is going to have, uh, is expected to have that matching value p.get model. Okay, so it's just another one. And you might be tempted to write something like this. Let me uh, show to you here. That might be what you tend to, uh, sorry, let me just start from scratch. Let's say assert true, so we can put some Boolean expression. Let me show you the correct one. You can also say p.get model over here dot equals. And then over here, this could be iPad Pro 12.9. Okay, so this will be okay. And let me show you the one that may not work sometimes. And then I will also explain to you how to understand this multi-dot notation, right? Let's say you might be tempted to also write assert true and then p dot get model. And then equal equals. I noticed that uh, quite many of you actually use this back in uh, 1022. But I would say in the first year, I didn't quite emphasize that you should not really do this. But I think now, since you're getting to the more advanced level, I should really mention to you, this may not be the way to go. So you might say p.getModel equals equals, and then the string, all right? To really uh, get focused on these two specifically, what I will do is, can we just say, starting from this line, can you select, select all the way to the end over here? Okay, this block, and then, Control forward slash or command forward slash to comment them out. Okay, I want to focus on just these assertions over here. And now currently I can expect a green bar. All right, everything just passed. So you might argue to me, actually Jackie, this actually is okay. But I would say this is okay for the following reason. Let me explain to you quickly, but you gotta uh, listen carefully. Whenever you got string literal in your Java code, right? You got string literal, you got string literal, right? You might be thinking that this particular string literal might be corresponding to a different runtime string objects than this string literal will correspond to. You might be thinking, it's actually not. Every string literal that actually has, a, uh, has the uh, same value will be turned into a single runtime string objects. Okay, it will be. So that means when you are saying p.getModel, you will simply just return just the same string literal object like this, which has the same reference as this particular string literal because they have the same value. It's a very brief explanation, okay? As far as uh, the discourse is concerned, I think that should be sufficient. So how can I just adjust my test case a little bit so that your use of the relational operator here can simply fail? Well, here, the address of these two string objects happen to be the same because they're referring to the, string, uh, the same string literal. But what if I got this? 
For example, uh, I'm going to use uh, an expression called anonymous objects, object without a name, which I'll try to review maybe uh, in part two of the tutorial series next week. But let me just write it. Rather than a string literal, I can say, what about a new string, a brand new string? I can say new string. And the string class actually got a constructor which will take a string literal. If I do this, okay, and now if I try to run this again, you actually fail. Where do we fail? If I double click on this, you can see we fell exactly here. Let me explain to you why it would fail. It fails because number one, this is a brand new string objects that's completely different from this particular string objects in terms of their addresses. So they belong to different or distinct locations in the memory. So you just cannot compare their addresses directly unless you really want to. But I don't think in this case you want to. In this case, you just want to use dot equals dot equals will be okay. Dot equals will only compare the contents rather than addresses for the string. All right. So let me uh, leave this particular uh, expression over here just to always keep in mind in your programming test or in your laboratory exercises, it's not guaranteed. You will always just get a string literal over here. It's not guaranteed. Sometimes you might just get a new string object, in which case you just cannot use the two equal sign over here. All right. Hopefully that's clear to you. Okay, so here I'll just put a comments over here for you. I would say this does not necessarily work always, okay? For example, here, we just got a new string. All right, that's one thing I would like to talk about. I would like to talk about this particular expression very quickly, just about how you can interpret the multi-dot expression, okay? Let me now switch to my iPad and I would like to analyze this particular expression together with you quickly. Okay, let me just go to my iPad. Let's write down the expression over here. It's, uh, remember we actually declare products P, right? That's the decoration. And let's not worry about the new expression that's assigned to it, okay? So you can see the type of P is simply just product. And the expression we had uh, on the Eclipse was P dot get model. And then dot equals. And over here is simply iPad Pro 12.9. Okay, so this was the uh, Boolean expression. But why is that a Boolean expression? Uh, so let me just uh, revisit this point, which you may have picked up from the first year. If not, now is really the time to pick it up. Okay, let's now analyze the type of the for the expression. And if you want to a analyze multi dot expression you want to go from left to right okay from left to right let's now start with the p over here and we know that for p what's its type is declared to be products okay that was easy and in the product class we know that we have the get model accessor method what is type what's its type let's now see if I go back to products, and then if I see get model, you can see that's string type, right? That's uh, how you uh, infer that. So in this case, p get model up to here is of type string. And now the next question is, does the string class actually support the equals method? The answer is yes. To be more precise, in Java, every class in the library or every class you define on your own, they all support the equals method by default. That's something you can just remember for now. I'll explain to you later about how you can customize the definition for the equals method. Okay, but equals method is simply just a Boolean uh, return value method, like an accessor. Okay, so equals method is actually comes from the string class. It's also very important for you to know if the equals method call is actually valid, which, ver which version of the equals method is being called? It should be the version from the string class, okay? And now let's do a little bit more. And for the, for the string equals method, we are just comparing string with another string for their contents. So now you can see overall, this particular expression over here is, oh, let me just do a little bit better. So this entire expression with two dots, it's a type should be Boolean. So this is why we can actually put the entire expression under the assert true, right? 
remember we actually put assert true and then we say which uh, i just don't have enough space but you can put a brackets over here for the assert true that's exactly what we did right all right so hopefully that analysis helped you let me go back over here to the uh junit test class let's go back to test products okay we're done here and for the rest of the uh stuff let's now try to uh change the uh, expected value if we uh if we need to okay let's do that quickly let me just go back to my notes to see if i miss anything okay seems like we are okay so what i will do is uh i will start from line 53 and select all the way to the end up to here and then you can say command or control forward slash to uncomments right let's see if we if we pass the test if I simply relaunch the test case over here, apparently we're still failing. But where do we fail? You can double click on the test case. It's telling that we are still failing this original price. That means up to here we are fine because the uh, connectivity uh, is still the Boolean or uh, default value false. But remember this in this overloaded version of the constructor, we actually also set the original price. So since like the original price has to be uh, uh, has to be uh, change on its, uh, its expected value in this case. So I will simply just copy this value here and then the get p dot get original price rather than expecting that to be 0, 0.0 which is wrong I can now paste the value I just copied right it should be this particular value. What about get discount value? Well get discount value will just be 0, 0.0 and what about get price? This one here it should not be 0, 0.0 anymore because it should be the original price minus the discount value, which will be just the same. Okay, let's try to relaunch the test case. We're still failing, but let's see which line. Double click. Now we're failing this line. So now I want to show you once more how you can use uh, you can use the uh, useful feature uh, in Eclipse uh, for the uh, JUnit test uh, failure. Let me just uh, un uh, un maximize this, and then I will. Launch again. So now you can see we got failure here, and then you can see it's exactly this line. Uh, if I double click on uh, double click on this line seventy five, and since now the expected value and the actual value are actually string values, so we can usefully click on the first line over here. Right? You can see uh, JUnit tests actually very usefully tell us where exactly they're different. You can see that it's the first string. The expected value is actually null because we just copy and paste from the earlier test for the default constructor but now since we are using the overloaded version constructor the actual value has been set already to ipad pro 12.9 right anything else and also you can see rather than uh here 0, 0.0 over here for the original price also we need to change that to be this particular value right hopefully you can see that we're going to change two places Okay, so this one should be iPad Pro 12.9 over here, right? And the original price, let me just uh, be careful. Okay, let me just make sure I copy that. And here is going to be replaced by this value over here. Okay, and let's now rerun the test. All right, we got a green bar. All right, so that's about the uh, second test case. And now let's move on to their third test case.